Well, one man who knows firsthand about doing business in Russia is William Browder. He's the CEO of Hermitage Capital Management, once one of the largest foreign investors in that country. In 2005, though, he was banned from Russia over allegations of tax evasion. Browder says his company was targeted by criminals trying to seize his assets. Well, earlier I spoke to William Browder and asked him if he was pleased to see Russia called to account in a court outside its own borders. I am, um, and, and I am because um, what, what we've experienced in Russia, what we've seen in Russia over the last few years, is a complete um, deterioration of the rule of law. Essentially, you cannot get justice in Russia. And so it's very important um, for uh, investors, but also for the um, Russian state to understand that laws do exist, even if they don't exist in their own country. And so um, by, by um, the government being forced to lay out their case um, in an objective and uninfluenceable court um, in Strasbourg, I think is a very important development and something which I think um, has positive implications for investors. A few years ago when Mr. Khodorkovsky, the former owner of UCOS, was on trial, obviously he's now in, in, in prison, uh, you and I spoke in Moscow. You were actually quite critical of UCOS because you said that they had bought courts. But more broadly, you've, since then, you've been essentially forced out of Russia. Uh, even your lawyers have been beaten up and your business has uh, suffered attempts, in a sense, to, uh, to, to, to steal its corporate identity. You've talked about this being a criminal state in which to do business, but are things getting better or worse in Russia now? Um, th th things are getting dramatically worse in Russia right now. Um, uh, I, I mean, j just, just to put it in, in, in a, a very simple terms, um, I was kicked out of Russia. My, um, uh, offices were, my offices and my lawyer's offices were raided. They took away our documents. The police then used, stole our companies. And then after that, um, the companies were used to steal $230 million of taxes that we paid to the Russian government. Our lawyers protested. They arrested our lawyers and uh, our lawyer, Sergei Magnitsky, um, stuck him in jail and he died on November 16th. Um, I, can't, I, I can't imagine that um, uh, there's anything you could do to describe that other than terrible. Well, you are vocal, of course. Other people are less vocal and they've made money in Russia. Do you see it as an absolutely terrible place to do business or to invest under any circumstances? Or do you accept that those who tow the Russian government line can actually get quite a lot of money out of the Russian markets? Well, um, let, 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 let's, let's look at some of the other examples. You had BP that's been uh, shaken down on a number of occasions. Just uh, a week and a half ago was the most recent incident. You had Shell that lost half of their Sockland Island business. Um, you had IKEA, which has had a huge, horrible situation with corruption. You've had Telenor. Um, you've had News Corp. I could go on and on and on. Um, I, I don't think, I, I think that there's, a, there's not that many people that are going to come onto your program and talk the way I'm talking, but um, everybody has had the same experience. Sure, you can make some money in Russia. We made a lot of money in Russia before they kicked me out and killed my lawyer. But um, it's a question of, you know, uh, uh, is, is that worth it? And, and I would say that, that um, the situation has gotten so out of control out there until that they actually um, can get a rule of law in place and start to control this corruption, um, it's not a place for investment.